7 o'clock. Do you know where your freedom is? I heard it. Yep. The lady said. The lady said. <laughs> lady said it. You're recording. Friend Laven. Hello and welcome to the first episode I've recorded this month. With me is my guest host, Court. <laughs> Little mimicking of me there. I kind of liked it. Yeah, we should use that intro. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe I'll I'll go back and splice that in. <laughs> or we've already started. You know how this shit works. If you remember, it's been almost two years. Since- yeah, Jesus, man. My life is just, time is flying by. My wife got injured, and that took up a lot of time uh, when she was recuperating with her knee. And at some point in time in there, I switched jobs, and I got a lot fucking happier. And then things leveled out, and I realized that everything is still fucked up, so I'm still angry, but... I'm doing what I can to try and make that better. Uh, first, I'm taking care of me and my own. And then um, once I get myself out of some debt, I'm going to be looking at trying to use my new uh, properly gotten gains, I guess, because my job now has a purpose. Um, I, I I directly deal with software that has to do with uh, public safety now. <laughs> and that's, that's awesome. Right. That's yeah. <laughs> And I doubled my income. I doubled my take home from this job too. Like I'm finally making what a software developer should be making at my at my current stage where I'm at in my development career. So yeah, yeah. It's not that I'm being paid that ridiculously much now where I'm at. It's just that I was be pay- being paid ridiculously low where I was at, <laughs> <laughs> and that balance has now been redressed. I guess you could say. There you go. And you're thinking globally and acting locally. Like, the personal is political. Yeah, trying to, trying to, you know. Um, I I still am a meat eater, but uh, I make sure that at least the beef I get here is farm to table and purchased locally. And I go directly to a farmer and uh, make a deal, purchase the amount of meat I need, which just so happens to be by a fraction of a cow. Uh, is the lowest you can do. <laughs> nice. Hey, that works. Yeah, I haven't figured out how to do that with chickens yet lately, but I don't eat a lot of chicken, but I eat a lot of beef. So, mm. you know, that that is how it is. Uh, I I haven't made any, like, donations and things like that just yet, but um, I have been trying to, like, for local theater, I've been participating because I have some, you know, when I have a little bit extra money now, instead of just blowing it on something for myself i want to kind of do something else so if i can make two things happen at the same time like going to community theater and supporting community theater little things um i haven't been getting too involved in political uh stuff locally because everything's a fucking mess and right now it's kind of stalemated and dead locally which is good um the only super ultra conservative state to not immediately pass an abortion ban thanks to one fucking senator and i don't know his name maybe you do i thought it was a woman who was filibustering yes that i'm not just talking about the filibustering that she had done no it actually came to a vote and it came down to one guy that was sort of like uh in question as to what this one particular gentleman that is a senator state locally was going to decide and because they voted no on allowing an abortion ban it did not go into place it was that narrow of a margin and that's on top of that state senator that was doing all the filibustering and just genuinely being a fucking badass keeping this stuff from going through yeah you you folk had uh a uh like a six week ban right that's what it was I think that's what it was going to be, but it didn't get passed. Yeah. It's not the most offensive of all of the abortion bans either. I mean, it's 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 still terrible. Don't get me wrong. And it's still telling someone what they can and can't do with their own bodies. But it's not as egregious as, like, force everyone no matter what is what I don't think they were trying to do. And even that didn't pass, 
which gives me hope that maybe like Nebraska has a future. Who knows? I mean, there's always crazier, wilder things have happened. I know um, <laughs> our uh, super gerrymandered super majority ran through a six week ban, and it is currently it's been on hold about a year because uh, an appeals judge put it on hold. But I mean, most people don't even know that they're pregnant. A lot of people don't even know that they're pregnant by six weeks. And yeah, our state notoriously sure. had the fucking 10 year old that had to go to Michigan or Indiana after, to abort her rapist's baby after the ban was put into place, but before it got put on hold. And there's a lot of lives that are being ruined by this bullshit ultra conservative posturing that's going on trying to rile up their base uh and really all they're really riling up is essentially a quarter of the country is what it represents of what's going on with the people that are actually agreeing with all the bullshit that the republicans are making less than a quarter of a country of the country right now i think it is less than 25 percent at this point and it's not enough to get them all reelected, and yet they pander to the lowest common denominator at this point and we talked about it, but it feels a lot like it's finally really starting to eat itself. This uh, conservative party and the ultra Opus Dei stuff is really seeming like it's backfiring a lot, and particularly in our Supreme Courts. There's just more and more reports of these ungodly, awful things that these people are doing in the Supreme Court and getting away with it and taking bribes to make decisions and this sort of pay for play thing that is just getting the surface of it scratched and it's so obvious what's going on to just read about the various things that are happening where you get like these free vacations from a billionaire that then you make a fucking decision on their behalf in some way shape or form and that's clarence thomas that's doing that but he's also wrapped up in january 6th and all the stuff that's going to be hitting the, sh the shit hitting the fan for january 6th for the hammer coming down on those folks including the state senators that are involved all working with trying to keep Trump from getting in trouble in New York. Like, it, it seems like all of their focus is being stretched, and it's a multi prong attack that is a prison of their own making that they've all put themselves in by just pushing a little too hard into fascism to the point where they triggered what they refer to as the deep state. I mean, that seems to be what's going on all in a big wrap up. And you can, you can give us news stories that dig into the details of these things, but like, am I, is my big picture seem off to you as to what's happening? That is definitely uh, an interpretation as to what's going on. As was going back to the Supreme Court, which you were talking about, uh, yeah, there was the stuff about Clarence Thomas and his, uh, his patron, Harlan Crow, who... That's a good word for sugar daddy. Yeah. Nazi memorabilia collector. Perfectly normal for a person who is a fan of World War II and its villain. Oh, wait, I said that wrong. <laughs> I, I saw, I know this is kind of petty, but I saw some of his authentic paintings by Hitler might be forgeries. <laughs> I'll take the Schadenfreude wherever I can get it. I'm living on it lately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, April Schadenfreude's bring May episodes. Yeah, yeah, that it's the thing that got me back was this six foot line of Schadenfreude I've been snorting on the daily. The things coming out about Clarence Thomas. I mean, fucking since we've last talked, the Tucker Carlson lost his platform to slander and enslave. Yeah, that was pretty. That was that was pretty tasty. That was a great fucking week, man. It's going to be hard to top that. What that that entire week of just and it's still going. Like that's the best part is this this fight between Fox and Tucker where it's eating itself trying to get over the whole Dominion and future lawsuits for the fucking lie that they were trying to push. I just, I can't wait for more. I'm, I'm waiting for more with bated breath for Fox to just continue to eat itself too. Again, it's a beast that's become so big in its hate that it can't feed anymore that now it's chewing on its own limbs. So you heard the some of the recordings that the former producer released to the news? about the pre-interview pre-interviews done on Fox. I know that like they were there's like a pay-per-play thing that happened 
also with Tucker. I know that much for sure. And I know some of the thing where they were like, no, you have to discuss it in this fashion to be a guest when it was talking about some of the voter thing. But like, if you wouldn't mind expanding on that, just to make sure that I I'm on the right page with you. And then also that the audience knows for sure what we're talking about. Okay. I forget her name. She is one of the lawsuits against Fox news because she was fired, but she was moved from Maria Bataromo's show. Joey Ramone would be spinning in his grave if he found out about her. Yeah, but that's later Joey Ramone when he was doing his own album, like just solo album Joey Ramone. But even still, he would be very upset because he really liked watching her talk about the uh, NASDAQ. (laughs) What's happening in a Wall Street? (laughs) So she got moved to Tucker and she was involved. in. She had recordings of Maria Bataromo. Uh, all these other people, producers and whatnot, doing the pre-interviews with different people, you know, Rudy Giuliani, uh, what's his fucking name, uh, Peter Navarro, uh, who... Mike Lindell, the, the crack fox himself. Yes. Peter Navarro is the Green Bay Sweep guy, if you remember him. The guy that just was going on all of the cable news networks talking about their plan to steal the election and calling it a fancy name and forgetting that he was admitting to crimes on TV. (laughs) He's connect. He, some of the statements that he has made is part of the, uh, special counsel, Jack Smith investigation. One of the many things that Jack Smith is investigating into, uh, Donald Trump. This is part of the wire fraud investigation. Because okay, so this is outside of J6 stuff. It's even more crimes because everybody who wants to do crimes does crimes with Trump. Well, this is connected because of the <laughs> wire. Get your string out, everybody. We're going to make a Pepe Silver board. <laughs> this is back when people did things over the wire, over Telegram. But also wire fraud, there was a court ruling. I forget which court. I think it was the Supreme Court, which we'll get back to them in a minute. Um Every email, every fraudulent email is a count. So all the please donate to the election defense fund, which doesn't exist and didn't exist. That could be tied to a count of wire fraud. Oh, my Lord. The Trump organization loves to do its fundraising via false emails that are lies. Yeah, I mean, I've I've got one email connected to the show that is signed up for Trump emails, and it's just like quite a few a day, especially back then. So I don't even know how they're they're, but it's it's an automatic paper trail, also. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, Peter Navarro said that. Most of the people didn't spend the money, the surprise, surprise, that they were soliciting to fight the steal, stop the steal, blah, blah, blah. Went Money went towards, and this is one of the people from his team, saying that money went towards a paying lawyers for the E. Jean Carroll case, which we may or may not talk about today. We probably will. Uh, the Alvin Bragg grand jury case. And that's just one separate investigation right now because the election defense fund wasn't created. There were shell companies created to siphon the money. But that's part of the wire fraud case. There is also the January 6th just did he, did he not cause or does he have any fault in the riot and coup, attempted coup shit that happened the way we say it so flippantly. (laughs) <laughs> the fake electors thing where people wrote uh, people sent letters to claim that they were the actual uh elect uh electoral college representatives thing which I don't know we I don't did we talk about that back in the day or you know what I'm talking about Yeah yeah it was um there was the electoral college thing where you could overturn the electoral votes from the state if the true all electoral college people decided to not go with the will of the actual people that voted in that state and they could overturn it and just give it to somebody else. 
Yes. There were these loose, like, kind of weird rules around that that should be just eliminated anyway because it just doesn't make any sense. I remember that, but I didn't remember us discussing that there was actually a campaign of people impressionating them and committing fraud to try and overturn the votes in the state. Uh, well, they weren't pretending to be other people. They were just claiming to be the official people. So they had of the alternative electors meet at uh, the same times as the regular electoral college elect uh, electors. And they all filled, they all did the vote and they all sent official statements to uh, the electoral boards claiming that they were like, I am the official elector. That's still fraud though, right? Yes. Like, to e try and exactly. claim. Exactly. Yeah, it's like it's a it's a stolen valor thing at the very least. That is being looked into. There are people that would start to admit to being part of it and then just say, oh, well, you know, I was just doing what the head of my local party told me to do. There's also the pressuring of state and local legislatures uh, and officials like the the perfect phone call in Georgia. Now that's looking like it's shaping up to be even more of a thing that he's going to have to worry about than New York. Yeah, uh, that's getting looked into by Jack Smith and the Attorney General in Georgia. Um, the SCOTUS, back to them. <laughs> uh, let's see, you said the stuff about um, Clarence Thomas and his yeah. wife, his wife's involvement in it's the January so much stuff. Yeah, like the last time that we talked, like a year or so ago, um, it got even worse. Like her involvement in it is a lot more than just like encouraging texts and things. It seems like she's been planning some of it. I don't know if you saw the stuff about uh, Chief Justice Roberts's wife. Oh, he's his wife's involved in this shit too. I didn't know that they roped them in. Well, this is more in the Supreme Court doesn't have an official code of ethics. They have an honor system where they police themselves. Oh, yeah, because we've always investigated ourselves and found that we've done nothing wrong. Exactly. Uh, Roberts's wife, I think, uh, I forget what course of time it was, but she made about $10 million as a recruiter for law firms, placing lawyers into law firms that argued in front of the court, which some some may see him as a conflict of interest. <laughs> some people who realize that what a conflict of interest truly is cannot deny that it is the definition of conflict of interest. Exactly. And you you want to talk, well, you, I wonder how many justices are very angry with Clarence Thomas right now for fucking it all up. Other justices' financial disclosures are being looked at more closely. I do not know if you or anyone else is aware. I'm Charlie with the red strings, but these are all reported facts. Whether or not it's Unethical is up to the Supreme Court who tells us what ethical ethical means. But yeah, what whatever they decide to do is whether or not it's ethical for them to do it. Exactly. Uh, Justice Gorsuch, who would have been Justice Merrick Garland if, uh, you know, they hadn't have held the seat empty for over a year. Let's call it held hostage because that's literally what they did. There we go. He did you hear about his property deal? Yeah, I briefly. I know that it was a property that he was not able to get purchased in any way, shape, or form. And shortly after, he was confirmed. Um, I, I don't know if it was the same sugar daddy that's got Clarence Thomas in his back pocket, but somebody that's one of those kind of sugar daddy mega donor types bought it, that it, useless property right after that. Right? It was a separate person. He was trying to sell a cabin in the middle of fucking nowhere in Colorado. For two years with no takers. And then a week, I think it was nine days after he was appointed, they sold it to the head of a law firm that has quite a few cases show up in front of uh, the, uh, the court. Yeah, nothing sus about this and nothing says the Supreme Courts need to have an external ethics committee that follow them around more than any of this. And we haven't seen the documentary about Brett Kavanaugh, but uh, more stuff has come out. And it was reported in The Guardian recently that um, would you be surprised to find out that the Chuck Grassley-led investigation into Brett Kavanaugh 
cut a lot of corners and uh, purposefully left out negative uh, effect information and left in disproven information. I would not be shocked at all, sir. So one of the one of the things against uh, one of his many accusers was saying that, oh, she just mistook him for this other guy who was totally at school with us at the time. He was in high school and not at the college when that happened. And that was known to the investigators, but that was, you know, left out because it made things look bad. I'm not shocked at all. This is my so not shocked face that any of that <laughs> took place. So the Supreme Court, for lack of a better, more grand sounding phrase, is a fucking clusterfuck garbage fire right now. There's all these reports of justices arguing with each other and, you know, all the stuff about the who leaked the memo about the Dobbs decision. Uh, it seemed like as soon as they found out that Ginny Thomas was probably involved, they stopped trying to find the invest find the leaker. There appears to be some sort of weird behind the scenes agreement, which sort of brings us back to the original point. And we can keep going about the Supreme Court if we like. There's so much fucking stuff being revealed about this mysterious shell. Yeah, <laughs> they they've they fucked themselves in by doing this and packing the court in such a manner and making it so obvious about all the horrible things that they were doing just to get these justices in place that it kind of brought too many people's attention to it and look what happened especially for roberts who claims that his big interest is maintaining the reputation of the court <laughs> right so why would he ever go testify to try and defend the reputation of the court whenever someone is starting to question said reputation of the court exactly. he should just be able to investigate himself and not be questioned ever again ever that sounds a lot like fascism yeah and, and i've got a bone to pick a little bit with the quote-unquote liberal justices the justices signed off on a letter saying that they are fine with the way they operate now not just the shithead six or whatever you want to call the Federalist Society installed and protected justices, <laughs> but the three radical left judges or whatever the fuck everybody calls them. They all signed off on a letter saying that they were not in need of more stringent ethics restraints. <laughs> we will continue to investigate ourselves and find that we have done nothing wrong. When we were talking about this and we were, we were looking towards this conversation, uh, I wanted, I looked up. I don't know if you, you're aware of the circuit courts. You know, the circuit courts that sort of make rulings that then the Supreme Court may or may not take up. Yeah, it's like a cascading system of if you get a ruling in one court, you can then choose to appeal it and continue your fight in a higher court. And then there's always a higher court until you get to the highest court in all of the land, which is clearly the most corrupt and pay to play. Yes. And they are in charge of the circuit courts. Right. So they will investigate the circuit courts and tell you if there's any wrongdoing and then report back to no one. And they make the final rulings like... Uh... Well, one of the things that seemed a little odd is that I think part of the reason why the justices may have all signed on the thing saying we don't need don't look at our ethics. We're going to look at our ethics was that lately there seemed to be rulings where instead of the justice that's in, in charge of the circuit making the ruling, they've allowed the full court to take a vote on it. Like the mefepristone, if I'm pronouncing that right, the abortion pill, or the pill that's actually used for other things too, but is only talked about and attacked as if it's only used for abortions by the right-wing people. I think people use it for... I don't, I don't even know. I know that it's uh, it's not just used for uh, medic, uh, pill abortions, but there was that ruling by the Trump judge in Texas that just said... I know the FDA approved it, 
20 something years ago. I am undoing that right now. And then another judge made a ruling saying, don't listen to that guy. And then it went to the, let me see, the fifth or the Texas circuit is, I think, Alito or Kavanaugh. Some humongously useless twat. Yeah. But they they went to Alito. Okay. Alito. Okay. Here's the little civics lesson for everybody. <laughs> Strap in, folks. They neglected to teach you this in high school. There are nine Supreme Court justices right now. The number of Supreme Court justices has changed over the years, but right now the idea of changing the number of Supreme Court justices is seen as a radical idea. Yeah, because it hurts the fascist state that wants to stay in charge, of course. Exactly. That each justice, especially back when people used to have to travel to do things rather than be able to do things online and whatnot. At one point, there were nine circuits and nine Supreme Court justices. Because then they took care of these regions, the big decisions for those regions. Do you know how many circuits there are right now? Uh, twice that, I guess. There's probably a lot more, right? They're breaking up more and more, right? There are 11, but also John Roberts has a D.C. circuit and a special federal circuit that seems to be random whatever. Whatever he has some kind of monetary interest in that he needs to keep his monetary interest flowing. Yeah, sure. So the first circuit is run by Justice uh, Kentanji Brown-Jackson. That is Maine, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Puerto Rico, and Rhode Island. The second circuit is Justice Sonia Sotomayor. That's Connecticut, New York, and Vermont. Alito runs the third and the fifth circuits. And by, if anybody doesn't know, Alito is one of the bigger dickheads on, on the SCOTUS. So he has ruling over... Delaware, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, the Virgin Islands, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Texas. That's why you see a lot of horrible shit come out of the Fifth Circuit. Makes sense. Uh, Supreme uh, Chief Justice John Roberts has the states that are like around Washington, D.C. Also, he has Maryland, the Carolinas, and the Virginias. Kavanaugh, fucker, he has two. He has the 6th and the 8th circuits, which is Kentucky, Michigan, Ohio, and Tennessee for the 6th circuit. And the 8th circuit is Arkansas, Iowa, Minnesota, Missouri, Nebraska, and the Dakotas. Uh, Handmade Amy Coney Barrett <laughs> is Illinois, Indiana, and Wisconsin. Handmade enthusiasts. Yeah. Uh, Elena Kagan is Alaska era, uh, of the ninth. Uh, yeah, Amy Coney Barrett is the seventh circuit. Sorry. And Elena Kagan is the ninth circuit, which is Alaska, Arizona, California, Hawaii, Guam, Idaho, Oregon, Montana, Nevada, the Northern Mariana Islands, which I don't know where that is, and Washington State. Uh, previously talked about. Uh, real estate developer Gorsuch is Colorado, Kansas, New Mexico, Oklahoma, Utah, and Wyoming, making up the 10th circuit. And then Nazi friend Clarence Thomas is in charge of Alabama, Florida, and Georgia, rounding out the 11th circuit. Wow. <laughs> I think there should be 11 justices. Yeah, one for every single circuit that currently exists. Why not? It's still an odd number, so there's no ties. Yeah, it makes sense. As you expand the districts, you expand the overseers of it, and then you get some fucking ethics facilitation in there to keep them all honest because of checks and balances, which seem to be a thing that is only for thee and not for me in this world. Can't fuck with my, my pro. I only make... Over $250,000 a year, plus all the shit I get for making speeches and public appearances. and I, I'm something. making less than half of that 
and I'm more than happy with what I am making currently. So I don't understand what, well, other than just fucking pure unadulterated greed and selfishness and avarice, why you would need that much. Uh, you know, I guess to pay off those debts, judge Kavanaugh or, <laughs> uh, pay off those non-disclosure agreements. You keep trying to pop up to try and try and hide the grossness of your past. You rapist pig, right? Alleged rapist pig, alleged accused, Accused rapist pig. That's even better. And so I know uh, in a recent campaign speech, a former resident of the White House and current (laughs) defendant in many cases pending and likely looming. They have the best cases, the one most wonderful cases against him. Believe me. He wants to appoint more judges like, uh, which one was the one that uh, uh, that died before Gorsuch was appointed? Uh, I can't remember his name. He was one of the bigger right-wing douchebags. He like suffocated or died on a mysterious camping trip with other Republicans. <laughs> God damn it. They, they found him going the way of the guy of in excess in the closet somewhere. And they just kind of like <laughs> pulled up his pants and then uh, let him be allegedly. I allegedly. Don't know. Scalia. That's it. Scalia. He said he would appoint more justices like Scalia and Clarence Thomas, who was under siege by the l- radical left wing press for reporting facts about him (laughs) yeah when things come to light that people don't want to be shown it's always slander and liable when actual slander and liable is proven in court then fox news just settles (laughs) some some people talking about well what if tucker carlson ends up over on newsmax okay that's just the same as him being deplatformed because he's talking to the smallest audience possible yeah. It just gets even more and more niche. He can't brainwash any more fucking people on the hugest platform that these conservative douchewads use to make more white nationalists. Tommy Tuberville, Senator Tuberville, uh, sorry, need, forgot to put respect on his name. Was <laughs> Fuck that guy anyway. Using his official platform to tell people to unsubscribe from Fox and start watching Newsmax because of all the... Because the Murdochs are a left-wing family or a liberal family trying to ruin our country or something like that. Well, they do have a history of such wonderful donations and making sure that all of the people are taken care of. And No, I'm, I'm lying, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're horrible, selfish pieces of shit who have corrupted news and turned it into propaganda that a racist white nationalist population that is also Christian nationalist devour up and use as an excuse to try and overthrow the government. Yeah. Checks out. Typical liberals. <laughs> yeah. Pointing out facts about what has happened because of your news coverage, Fox News. Thanks. <laughs> and I mean, maybe he's being really hardcore in his... Uh, differentiation between liberals and left, but I don't think so. No, it's essentially anybody who disappoints the current Donald Trump train and makes it to where the actual insurrectionist may face some kind of fucking jail time or anybody that doesn't automatically keep this propaganda pipeline open that is feeding their 24 or less percent base of 24 percent of the country or less. And dying out even faster because I don't know if you've seen the stats on the newer crop of voters coming up and the the younger and younger generation of voters, but they're skewing towards all the things that the right wing are railing against, like equality and treating people like people and even universal basic income and all sorts of stuff that has got to be terrifying them, which is why they're pulling out all the stops and trying to stop this from happening because Everybody might have to pay their fair share when it comes to taxes soon. Yeah. That's why I know my state legislature 
rammed through legislation last year uh, called some of the strictest uh, voter restrictions in the country, making it extremely difficult for... And we have a lot of colleges here, especially in Columbus, but also in Cleveland and Dayton and Cincinnati, making it hard for resident out-of-state students to vote, making it harder for enlisted people overseas to vote, and eliminating August special elections because they were a big waste of money, even though in thrice violating the state Supreme Court ruling against our gerrymandered districts last year, they went ahead and kept the gerrymandered districts and had a special election in August. Then they passed legislation getting rid of August elections. And right now they are trying to pass legislation requiring a special August election this year, which is the lowest turnout election year round, which is, was their argument about eliminating it in last year or eight months ago. Even uh, they want to bring it back again. The party of fiscal responsibility wants to have a $20 million election, special election because activist groups gathered enough, enough. We've had a thing in the state constitution since the 1800s uh, dictating how citizens initiatives can force laws onto the state without the legislature's help, if you get enough signatures and you get it on a ballot and it gets voted on and 51% of the state approves it in an election, they got enough signatures to undo the abortion bans that they've been ramming down our throats. And it will probably be on the November ballot. So they are trying to force through legislation to force a special election in August, where the fewest people vote, requiring 60 percent of the state to vote for something and a certain percentage of residents from every county to approve of something for it to pass without the legislature. But the legislature still just needs 51 percent to do anything. So they're literally trying to hack the voice of the people and keep that from being able to be done by limiting their availability to get people to the polls to do this thing. Yes. Uh, the Board of Elections, every living former governor, Republican and Democrat, and 200 voter rights and uh, activist groups, bipartisan groups, have spoken out against it, but they've just been ramming it through. Like the Senate passed something, uh, the governor, who all the Republicans called a rhino because he said... Trump lost the election and that COVID is real. Uh, he said he would sign it if they rammed it through the legislature because it means what it they're doing what they want and it would be over with. Uh, so it's if they they have to get it passed and signed before May 10th to force it onto a special August election. So I've been very stressed out lately. Uh, <laughs> there have been a lot of uh, things at the state house downtown. Uh, they've they've been moving the hearings. You know, they'll set it up for one day in one building, and then at the last second, they'll change where it is, and the time and the date, and they'll cut off people. I think there was something close to a hundred people showed up to testify against it. And six people technically to testify for it, although one was one guy speaking on behalf of two lobbyists, and they keep framing it as a we're fighting against outside influence in our elections, whereas the people that are pushing for this are outside influences, and they are telling the Ohio groups to shut the fuck up. <laughs> Ah, uh, brother. Yeah. It's uh, become so brazen and so obvious at everything that they're doing that you don't even really need to do a whole lot of deep diving political analyzation to see that they're scrambling, they're panicking, and they're terrified that this due process law that they've been using to disparage and minimize the voice of the public 
may eventually be pointed right back at them to where they can't manipulate and make money off of people's misery anymore. That's what it feels like, right? Yeah, I it's it's scary because you know it's like the the animal with its foot in the trap or whatever, and we, you keep thinking it's dead or the it's the horror movie killer, like it's it, you should be dead by now, but you keep fucking shit up so much. <laughs> It's yeah, it's truly the party of regression. They're trying to take it back to something that it doesn't exist anymore and is gone. And there's too many people that are calling for something different out there. And eventually, whenever a government needs to try and suppress the voice of the people, it's just going to go full fledged fascism. Yeah, it's scary to see them playing at full fledged fascism at this point. But at the same time, realizing how desperate they actually are when you step back and look at these actions and see how brazen they've become and they're saying the loud parts out loud now and just fully admitting to bigotry and racism and just fucking homophobia and transphobia in an effort to clamor and get any kind of response from a radicalized base that they can't control anymore that is terrifying even them you know that's where we're at i mean that's the part that's the scariest is this has become a monster that no one can control anymore because anything that is not absolute abject, just animosity towards anyone that's not a white fucking Christian is seen as woke leftism now. It's gone that far and that bad. And also with the, what, uh, the American Legislative Exchange Council, is that what ALEC stands for? I don't know. <laughs> They they're also aside because they're also trying these uh, making it harder for citizens to pass things, bills in all these other states, even though they keep coining them or framing them as avoid outside influence. Here's this national group that is writing the bills. Uh, they're all the anti trans shit. I know there was. Uh, what what's her name? Zoe. Zoe Zephyr Zephyr of uh, Montana, the only elected trans congressperson in the Montana legislature. They found out because of the rules that the speaker can deny anyone in the legislature the opportunity to speak. Regardless of any, you know, a decorum point of order, parliamentary, you know, tradition, whatever. They can just say you're not allowed to speak. They haven't been letting her speak on all of their anti-trans bills that they've been trying to push through. And it, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, I know they're trying some anti-trans shit here, too. Uh, it's all about protecting sports. Allegedly. And then they go through and ban shit, ban access to health care for people over 18, uh, which, well, that's Missouri. Yeah, good job, Missouri. You've sunk in the lowest of any state yet. And uh, what the Montana governor, uh, what's, what's uh, Greg Gianforte? Do you remember him from a couple election cycles back? The one that attacked no, the not. reporter? Oh, yeah, he, like, body slammed him, right? That dude? Yeah, yeah, the guy that body slammed a reporter on the night before the election, but with the I, early... I remember the action, but not the name. <laughs> yeah, uh, he he was, he was attacked a reporter from The Guardian, and uh, early voting had already happened, and attacking a reporter isn't really a deal-breaker for a lot of right-wingers. If anything, attacking someone like that is definitely a deal signer where they love him for life. So he, uh, his child is non-binary and they called on him to veto the bills, but he didn't give a fuck. And I can't remember if it's Wyoming or Montana, but the one woman in the legislature said that she would rather her kid be dead than trans. In official documents and official speaking. It's, so I've started going to therapy I, the first time in my life. I've realized that I can't rely or subject my family just to all the shit that's going on in my head. But 
these some of these people need more help than I do. They've got some rage issues or some some sort of suppression that is really coming out in hostile ways, even against people they love. Yeah, I really kind of question how much of this is really just still pandering because of the desperation. Yeah, um, I, mean, I want to, I want to give you at least some heartening on the statistics that I've been reading where I, you know, I'd have to look it up to be a hundred percent on this, but the bulk of the country, like, like over 60% of the country, 100% support trans rights and equality. And, you know, they want to, they want to have protective legislation to keep this type of abuse from happening and for gender affirming care to be available at all ages. You know, it's, it's something that a whole family needs to decide 100% for sure, you know, on gender affirming care. That's, you know, that's up with the parents and the children and everything on what needs to be done. But once someone is a full-fledged adult, banning gender-affirming care is essentially effectively genocide because you are killing those folks. You are making life for them so much more difficult than just simply allowing them to transform into the person that they need to be in order to survive. You would rather watch them die. That is what these laws are doing. And I don't even realize, I don't think they realize, like, how horrible the things that they're doing and saying truly are. I don't think they understand what it is that they're trying to push here. They're essentially just trying to stoke the base with more fire and hate because they can't do the racial thing anymore. It's, it's becoming way too obvious, and cops are finally being punished for all of the black people they murder. Not all, but some. Let's put it that way. More than none, like it used to be. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of I don't know, man. It feels like it feels like a total tipping point. And that's the that's the worst part to be when you're in a delicate mental mental state is to be teetering back and forth as to what is gonna happen with our society and, and what's gonna go on. And there's all these plates spinning up in the air and like we've said before, while it may be one thing to sit and talk about all the interesting times that have happened in history and be fascinated by them, it sure fucking blows to live through them. Exactly. You know, ultimately, progress wins because that is what moving forward is. Occasionally, regression does pop up and rear its ugly head like this and try and drag us backwards. But I just, I don't know, man. If we're going to survive, if this planet's going to make it, we all got to do it together. You know, in some way, shape, or form, we all kind of have to work together. And all of the people that are just wishing death and hatred on mankind are poisoning their brainwashed minds. Oh, Lord, child. <laughs> and, you know, there there's a bit more comeuppance and schadenfreude coming around, like you said. I mean, Carolyn Bryant Adams, or Karen Bryant Donham? Is that her name? She died. I'm not familiar. The, oh, the well. woman who got Emmett Till murdered. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, she also died 77 and had a long and fucking happy life where people left her alone so i wouldn't celebrate too much on that i mean yes ding dong the witch is fucking dead but the witch got to live a really long life before that happened that's true uh people are enjoying the down the current or temporary or whatever downfall of steve steven crowder big shit yeah. head uh well that's that's candace owens is kind of really uh forerunning that like when i talked about the gop eating itself they're attacking each other and they're vying for position to be the next favored child of propaganda. And Fox News may be trying to pare back its propaganda business. And if it softens when everything else is going so hard edged, I mean, something like Newsmax is going to probably sap even more viewers that are losing their viewership because they deplatformed Tucker, white nationalist in a bow tie Carlson. <laughs> and more may even be on the way. Who knows what these other lawsuits are going to reveal? But, I mean, I would think that Fox is going to start hemorrhaging money here soon. Rupert Murdoch apparently not doing so well because the wedding he was going to do at, like, 90-whatever irresponsible age it is to get married <laughs> is now not going to take place, and uh, the lawsuits are really looking like uh, they're being settled just to defend him because maybe his mental state isn't where people want to pretend like it is. 
I don't know, man. There's so there's so much stuff that's like these little pieces of for me it's a silver lining in the rainbow where horrible people have horrible things happen to them and I focus in on that. Because yes. I can't I personally can't handle all the horrible things happening to innocent people that don't deserve it just because their body may have been born physically one way, but emotionally and mentally they were born another. Like I can't handle that either. Um, well, all I can do is just support and amplify the voices of support as much as I can and then report the rhetoric and the hate whenever I see it pop up and then block and keep those people out of my life and not let them talk anymore. <laughs> yeah. Gotta suffocate that fire. Which we yeah. can say because we're not talking about people technically. <laughs> we're talking about the hate that is stemming from those people. The, they have to have a place to decorate with their bullshit. If they can't spew it at you anymore, then they don't have an outlet for it. And that's a way to deplatform them as well. I mean, I, I'm not saying I don't admire the people that go into the social media wars and, and make the comments back and like really start trying to get these folks to think in a different way. But it just seems like it's not fruitful. And all it really does is give you the melatonin for owning someone you know, in comment form. And it doesn't seem helpful to me. But when I see someone that is engaging in such a a warfare with someone who made a very clearly homophobic or transphobic comment on social media. I report that comment that is homophobic or transphobic or whatever. And then I'll report the post if it's a post that they're being, you know, calling out for being in such a way. Uh, just because um, it's just, it's, it's a quick thing. I noticed it. It's there. And uh, I'm reporting and blocking any of those pages automatically, any of those people, any of those commenters. A simple step. And yeah, I, I feel like positive, positive interaction with strangers is easier to do over the internet than negative. I don't really know exactly where I was going with her, but it seems like the people that the engagement can happen with, it's, you don't really troll that much in real life, but there's a lot of fucking trolling online because there's no real consequences. Yeah, more or less. You can get that that quick fix of whatever it is, the serotonin or whatever it is that shoots out of your brain uh, and makes you super happy. You're like, oh, yeah, I had to get me some of that, you know, <laughs> uh, just by arguing online and everything. But you're not going to change that person's mind. Mostly all you're going to do from insulting them is solidify them and make them think that they owned you in some way, shape or form. But at the same time, there's people getting outraged over the fact that there's a rainbow on their light beer can to the point where they're paying 20 bucks for the same beer per six pack just in a package that says that it's woke and it has nothing to do with that other beer. <laughs> I mean, that literally is a scam that Anheuser-Busch got away with and no one realized. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, I saw a lot of the, the Duff, Duff Light and Duff Ultra or whatever picture from The Simpsons going around with that. Um where it's all just coming out of the same hose. <laughs> right, but the the really funny thing is that woke beer that was being sold for 20 bucks a six pack was bottled by the same company. Like I don't know if people understand that breweries are just mega breweries now. Like Anheuser-Busch has like one giant thing where several different brands and labels are created and brewed just like Coors does in Golden Colorado or wherever <laughs> in the Rockies with like a ton of other beer brands and stuff. It's just one giant factory producing beer in some way, shape, or form. And it all goes to the same fucking parent corporation you're trying to boycott. So when you buy a 24-pack of Bud Light to shoot up the rainbows because you're afraid to taste it and that maybe you will like be accepting of your fellow man, I guess. I don't know why you're so upset about a rainbow on a can, but okay. Uh, and then you go out of your way to spend $20 on a woke beer can that is the same type of beer that happens to be manufactured by Goose Island, which is manufactured in the same plants as the Anheuser-Busch Bud Light, and it's the same beer. And you paid $20 for a six-pack just because you needed to feel more secure in your sexuality because people that are fluid in their gender or are changing their gender or are not taking the randomly assigned through genetics and other things that you possibly can't understand gender um, as their default, like you're upset about that. So you need to drink more expensive beer. Am I getting this right? Like, where's, I don't understand. Like, how are you owning anyone by doing that other than yourself and just paying a ridiculous amount of money? 
it, it kind of comes back a little bit to like what you were saying with things being done for the internet likes with uh, especially a lot of right wing politicians and some of the very out of touch Democrats. It's like <laughs> Nancy Pelosi wearing a dashiki into one day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, yeah. That old having fucking Lin Manuel Miranda read a poem about January 6th. So like that'll do it. Thanks. You solved it, Nancy. Yeah. Great job. Or you can't tell Diane Feinstein to to resign just because she's holding up confirmation of federal judges and not showing up for votes for two or three months or because she needs to retire, not because she's old, but because she seems to have dementia. You can be old. That's a subjective term, but... There are plenty. I think that is Congress protecting itself. But Pelosi said that people are going after her because she's a woman. I don't. I I don't know if you're aware of that whole brouhaha going on amongst the Democrats. Yeah, they're just as fucking awful. Um, They're trying to play a short game of pandering right now. And because they are essentially saying, hey, look, we're not the absolute worst, so you might as well vote for us. That is the Democratic platform these days. Like, yeah, we're corrupt, but at least we're not them, right? And Right, right? And pointing. That's it. That's the Democratic platform. Turning into another vote against this person presidential election coming over the fence. <laughs> right. It's like you have to vote for not fascism, but we're not going to do anything about fascism. That's literally what our voting rights have been lately. Sucks. <laughs> Mostly. Yeah. There's some good, yeah. like we said, we're getting back to some of the schadenfreude. There, there's, I know early on, if you go back to the episodes where we were thinking that something was going to happen very early, and it didn't, but then we got into, well, nobody's ever going to bring charges against this fucking guy. Or the, these fucking <laughs> ain't nothing going to happen. I was posting that on the regular on the regular. Now, still a lot. Of, I mean, nothing's exactly happened. I don't know how it's all going to pan out, but there will be just like there are a lot of citations or sightings. I'm not sure what the proper uh, wording would be of variable cases, Nixon versus U.S. or U.S. versus Nixon. There will be lots of Trump versus New York, New York versus Trump, the United States versus Donald Trump. Uh, For the next, maybe uh, Ron DeSantis or whoever the fuck. Uh, Oh, yeah. He really poked the bear with Disney on this. That lawsuit that they've put up, um, essentially, they basically just kept giving him more and more rope and watched him tie the noose with how they fucked with him. Well, how, they, how he fucked with them, and now they're like, oh, by the way, uh, he's been harassing us. <laughs> like, I got, I got no stake. I'm not, I'm not, like, rooting for fucking Disney, obviously, but I'm taking the lesser of two evils in this fight, and I'll take a giant inclusive con- corporate conglomeration that is trying to build people out of their money for nostalgia and uh, childhood love of just things in life. But at least they're being inclusive. And in this case, um, it feels like they're doing this almost performatively at first. And then when it just continued to bite them in the ass, then they're like, all right, well, let's just be a leader for civil rights. I don't know how that ended up happening, that the mouse is fucking put on the gloves, but it did. It's I mean, corporations will definitely defend their their profit margins. Uh, as we saw with Dominion mo- voting machines. Yeah, but I, what I'm getting at is, like, Disney doesn't give a fuck about people. Disney gives a fuck about how it makes the most money. And if they're willing to start going to toe-to-toe with a fucking governor in the state where they make the biggest portion of their money, I would say, in Florida, chances are the side that Disney is taking in the fight is the side that's going to win because they will throw the money at it, too. So basically, somebody poked that bear till they woke it up. And now even the special interests that have been paying off the Republicans to do the shit that they've been doing 
have got to be a little worried, right? Because <laughs> they woke the so. Disney bear. <laughs> and the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Right. Like, I, like, again, I'm not all thinking Disney's fucking great and everything. It's just another corporation that's just going to do what will make it the most money. But apparently what's going to make it the most money is being part of this fight for inclusivity, which means they've taken the temperature of society and they have found it to be that's the side they need to fall on. Yeah, it's got the larger percentages. They they surely play the percentages. And... Absolutely. Would they would they switch in a fucking heartbeat if it seemed like the rest of the winds have shifted to that side and then, you know, somehow make out a deal where, you know, they become humble about it so they can continue to make and rake in more and more corporate money? Yeah, absolutely they would fucking do that. But what I'm saying is taking the temperature of society can very easily be done in how the corporations fight for that same type of social issue. Yeah. It would be very interesting to see that work out that way, especially since so much time and money and effort was spent by right-wing billionaires to get human personhood for corporations to fight back against themselves. If, if more did it like Disney is doing it, like um, Disney is the main one right now. Uh, Budweiser definitely waffled. And I saw that they fired the executives that were in charge of the ad campaign with the trans actor or influencer. I don't remember uh, how this person was famous, but the, the cans that made Kid Rock sad. <laughs> yeah, it was a it was an influencer who was trans, I think. And they gave them a specialist can just like everybody else. You got to keep in mind, though, the profit losses that were happening with Anheuser-Busch was not all of a sudden just happening. They're trying to reconnect with a market that is no longer interested in Budweiser or Bud Light. They're trying to connect with a younger crowd. And because the people that have been buying Bud Light are like the boomers and they're all dying off and they need to connect to a better brand, you know, or a better uh, world of sales that they can tap into with the younger markets. And the younger markets are into a bunch of other things for their drinking or they just go to straight hard liquor because they realize there's no future for them. They might as well get started on their like, you know, blind drunk in an alleyway drinking, rubbing <laughs> alcohol strained through burnt toast. You know, that's that's how like the youth is drinking these days, like to try and forget just how horrible the world has become for them. <laughs> you know, like the profit shares were already down for Anheuser-Busch. That that report was always going to be what that report was going to be. That idea that it was go woke, go broke, and that's what hurt Anheuser-Busch. That is a fucking smokescreen exactly. that the right wing is trying to use. No, they were already going to have that problem. And the person who made that decision probably got fired for other decisions fiscally speaking, because this going into the woke and broke fight that they did and choosing the side that they did was the best move that they could make in an attempt to appeal to a new audience of people that wouldn't drink that fucking piss they call Bud Light. I can't remember the last time I had a Budweiser beer on purpose. I do. I remember. I was actually in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, working, um, doing some repair on some of the equipment for uh, the bus systems for security cameras and things for the company that I worked for at the time that was installing that stuff. And we had been working nights from like four in the morning when the buses shut down till like, or two in the morning. It was some ridiculous, like we started at 12 or two in the morning till like 8 a.m. when the buses had to be out. And we had to get the first ones in the garage done because they had a very hard schedule to keep for the city. Um, and so we were out at dinner right before we were about to work for the night. And someone that was a representative of Budweiser or Bud Light was in the same bar with us, came up to our table and offered everyone at the table a free Bud if we would just drink it with our meal. That was it. That's what we were offered. Uh, the supervisor at the time that was overseeing the project, we all looked at him and we're like, P -p please, sir, may we have a beer for free <laughs> before we go to work? And he shook his head. Yeah, that's fine. So we all had a Bud Light or no, a Budweiser uh, on, on this lady's account just so that we would be sitting there in the bar drinking a Budweiser as this diverse group that was about to go to work. And uh, it was the best tasting Budweiser I had ever tasted because it was free. And it was right before I was about to enjoy a long night of manual fucking labor. Was your Shawshank Redemption beers on the roof? 
<laughs> kind of yeah it's what it felt like yeah it was shit beer but like it was a moment of something good that happened in that trip you know what i'm saying yeah there you go i think yeah. i'm maybe and god this is about nine years ago might have been the last time i had a budweiser uh my father-in-law died nine years ago he was a party guy he had this weird dichotomy of like you know, like he he got us a private town car when we were dating. He bought us a rented us a private car to take us to the Nine Inch Nails concert. But he drank instant coffee and drank Budweiser and you know hundred two hundred dollar bottles liquor, but really cheap beer. It was, it was such a like a weird combination. But that was probably the last time I had. A Budweiser was a pool party at his house. Mm, yeah. If it's the only beer around, Bud and Bud Light is tolerable for sure, but like not by much. Yeah. <laughs> and that's really the problem that Anheuser Busch is having with Bud and Bud Light. And uh, their sales have been steadily declining because a lot of the brands that they offer are not the brands that folks want. Uh, you could see similar reports of what's happening with Coors and everything, and them putting a rainbow on there can't have nothing to do with that dropping. It's more or less uh, domestic beer is just not as cool for the kids these days, I guess. I mean, we have something like at least 30 breweries, not counting the Budweiser Brewery out by the highway. We have, I think, 30 independent breweries in the city and at least at least one but maybe more than one meaderies hipsters killed the mass produced <laughs> beer hipsters killed the mass produced beer in my heart yeah right like so microbreweries are essentially taking back and i mean that's like that farm to table movement thing that i've alluded to like i bought i bought a fucking cow from a farmer locally because it saved me money right but at the same time, I'm also going farm to table, which is the most economic and uh, environmentally lowest impact way of per producing your meat, right? Um, that's what I'm trying to do. And that's, gonna, that's for an entire year because I buy it all at once. So I'm really trying to minimize the greenhouse gas <laughs> emissions for me to get the fucking beef that I want to eat, right? Like I, it's, it's a nice consequence of the choice that I made to just buy a whole fucking quarter cow at once, right? That's but there's many things that went into that decision in my mind that I was like, no, there's plenty of reasons to justify doing this other than just saving money. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but like because of that movement, because of the farm to table movement of what restaurants are trying to do now, and and like a lot of these bigger chain companies, the reason that they're driving up the prices at stores and things like that is because one, they could get away with it because they can just blame it by inflation and then eventually lower the prices when. Uh, they reach that price point of pain when their product costs more than people can afford to ever buy it, no matter how much they need it, and therefore will live without it. Um, once they find that, then they lower the prices back down, and that's why the inflation naturally happened on its own. I'll tell you what, the Fed ain't doing shit to stop the price gouging that's going on, because they can't, because that's the inherent thing about capitalism, is price gouging. That's how capitalism is meant to work. And the way that this shit is taking place... Um, the way that these giant conglomerate corporations are doing what they're doing and the tricks that they're pulling to try and make this money, uh, it's, you know, like a modern society is sort of moving back away from mass produced giant amounts of quantities of things for food and all of that. And y you kind of notice that that's like a tastemaker thing. And that's what people can't, you know, the people that can afford will do. But if you can't afford it and you're shopping at like your local Walmart chain and everybody's blowing up the prices, but the people that are shopping there are your ultra conservative folks that, you know, will support you no matter what. But when you start picking their pocket where they noticeably are paying six and seven bucks for a carton of eggs, who do you think that pain price point is going to get pointed to? Like, where do you think they're going to go? So that's where the, you know, starting to attack more homophobia and going for uh, transphobia and all of that to try and distract that mass from them being built like they are. I think comes into play like let's get them angry about this very volatile thing that actually has nothing to do with anybody's decisions in life or who they are and who they were born to be it has everything to do with this is a person that we can demonize because immigrants and the wall are no longer working 
<laughs> and that's the next that's the next step. They're pointing all of us at each other to distract us from the fact that they are stealing from us and starving us to death in order to enrich their own lives. Right? Like that's that's the, that's the beauty of it. That's the that's the whole thing that they're doing. And Anheuser Busch, Coors, all those folks are all part of it as well. Uh, but the problem is they don't know how to connect with youth, and so this stuff is diminishing. And everything is leading me to want to quote Bob Dylan: "The times they are a changing, but times that are changing are interesting times." And they fucking blow to live through. <laughs> this must be what it felt like when the '60s were really first starting to heat up, right? And like uh, civil rights and equal rights were really a big thing that. We're so like, it's so passionate and it's so polar opposite sides. And to the average person that looks back at it now, obviously anybody who was trying to keep civil rights and women's rights down were horrible people and history looks hor really poorly on them. And yet none of us have learned from those mistakes and our lessons that can happen in the future. And we're, here we are again. It's just, it's come back around from immigrants and, uh, minorities to let's pick the biggest minority that everybody will not have a problem disparaging only modern people actually do have a problem with it and it's a weird culture war that is happening and it's still trying to be a distraction technique it all comes down to who is controlling the money <laughs> purposefully failing an open book test oh right and the democrats are not innocent in this at all because if the status quo changes too much and it starts leaning too much, then their special interests are fucking useless as well. I mean, who's going to pay the Democrats to moderately sit on the fence and do nothing about <laughs> any of this shit? If, you know, everything keeps getting pushed further and further to the right, how are they supposed to moderately sit the fence and do nothing? It's bad for business. <laughs> yeah, there's no progressive. There's only regression. And then there's trying to get back to homeostasis where we were before we regress in this nation. That's all there is. And it's been happening that way since we were kids in the 90s. And I, I, don't, I don't fault you for needing to do some self-care at this point because it's been the same battle since we were fucking 15, dude. Yeah. It has not changed. It just keeps pivoting to the next thing that they want to draw attention to to distract you from... The fact that our society is collapsing because it's capitalist base and without any compassion or care and it's a libertarian nightmare we all live in now and now a word from our sponsors <laughs> this will keep you quiet oh hi there i didn't see you you call me cutting a new show i'm bo ransdell and i'm one of the many creators you can find on legion podcasts i said quiet my fellow podcasters and I work hard to bring you the best in horror podcasting, but that comes at a cost. What's that like to live deliciously? Not that, but also, yes. No, what I'm getting at is that there are server costs, costs for good microphones and software for editing, all the things that make our shows, you know, fun to listen to. And you can help. If you're enjoying the shows on legionpodcasts.com or in the Legion Network available on iTunes and Stitcher, just about anywhere you can download a podcast, really. You can help us out and get a little something for your trouble at patreon.com forward slash Legion Podcasts. For just two bucks a month, you get a pair of movie commentaries exclusive to Patreon, and for five dollars, you can also join us for a monthly screening of a movie. All of that available on patreon.com forward slash Legion Podcasts. We appreciate it, and thank you for listening. Now, back to the cutting room. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they hit the, 
literally smearing shit on the walls level of tantrum a couple years ago. They're going to have to pass out at some point. <laughs> and then we can all rest and do what we wanted to do three hours ago. Even those getting dragged, kicking and screaming into modernity. <laughs> there we go, universe. Do it to get back at 90s court. And he'll admit it. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I think that was the uh, natural ending. I, I, who doesn't, who doesn't know court, but. And I think we've hit the time of the traditional plugging of. Your uh, creative outlets part of the show. The other, the other show is not called Court is in Session, but that is what I thought in my head when you said uh, arguing for or against movies. <laughs> there we go. That, that could be it. Or April Schadenfreude's Bring May episodes. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. It's time to say goodbye. Listen, you smell something. <laughs> Listen, you smell that? That's corruption in the Supreme Court. Don't forget to fucking duck and cover, kids. Also, especially don't let Justice Kavanaugh take you to a second location. He likes beer. He probably likes Budweiser. <laughs> Until they put a fucking rainbow on it. Yeah. Then it makes him mad. Like, being reminded of the shitty things he did. But you know what's not <laughs> shitty? Every time you all give me your time to listen to me and one of my dear friends rant and ramble about this horrible, wonderful world of ours. If you want me back on the reg on this show, folks, uh, just, you know, hit me up. I felt like I had said my piece and everybody was done with me, but I guess not. If not, let me know. 
Oh, you're regularly requested. I was just trying to leave you in your happy place. <laughs> yeah, the world is not a happy place, and I need to come out of my happy place to try and help as best I can. Well, you'll hear me again soonish, and uh, sounds like me and Court again also soonish. Possibly with a movie. You never know. Sometimes we talk about the movie. Sometimes we talk, we do a movie, and we talk as little about a movie as we did tonight, where there was no movie. <laughs> We did mention so, a movie. We talked about the documentary about Brett Kavanaugh and his horrible <laughs> actions. Um, but we haven't seen it. We're getting worse than Stephen King at 